Hi there, Social 30-1, taking a look at source number three. Our theme of the week so far has been mass executions. I'll give you a few seconds to study the cartoon, and then we'll get into it. All right, source three is a cartoon depicting what I'm thinking is a dictator being pulled over by an angry mob. So you can see the mob has tied a rope around the dictator and they're pulling over the dictator statue complete with the podium. And then in the foreground, you'll notice that underneath the podium, skulls. So the first thing you need to make an allusion to is that uh, most dictatorships and probably all dictatorships, authoritarian regimes are built on the bones, the skeletons of, of victims. Uh, probably the victims, um, the skulls are, are symbolizing the political opposition that the dictator had to murder and eliminate to solidify his grip on the power of his country. So I'm thinking for sure the skulls represent political opponents, but probably more than that, probably scapegoating in general, as we've learned every dictatorship um, targets a scapegoating group to, to focus discontent and anger and hostility, and the skulls could certainly be indicative of that too. And so what you might do next is maybe just speculate on, on what country this could be. Probably could be almost any dictatorship that has been toppled or is about to be toppled. So even though it doesn't really look like him, you know, the statue could be Adolf Hitler. It, it could be Benito Mussolini. It could be any dictatorship that has been toppled by its government. Um, meaning that any dictatorship could be built on, on the skeletons of of scapegoated victims. So if this is Adolf Hitler, you can speculate on who the, the skeleton bones would represent, if it's Mussolini, who would they represent and so on. I wouldn't go too far with that, uh, but you do want to make some historical illusions as to who that could be. And, and maybe the cartoon is portraying a revolution that has yet to happen. Maybe, maybe this is the Chinese government being toppled by its citizens, and then who would be the political opponents um, represented by the skulls on the bottom. Uh, any of those things would work. I think it's important to note um, the color, the, the colors used in the mob. Um, it's dark, it's, it's uh, chaotic. There's no real faces attached to the people saying that this could be any country. This could be any mob that is overthrowing a dictatorship. I think it's important that the cartoonist depicted this the way he did. He's trying to show you that really there's only one way of getting rid of dictatorship you got to topple it in a political revolution. Um, because you didn't vote for this dictatorship, you didn't pick them in the first place, you can't get rid of them uh, democratically. Um, and because that dictator was unaccountable, put themselves above the rule of law for so long, really the only avenue you have um, for political change is to get rid of them with violence. And so maybe you speculate a bit on revolutions that have happened that could be represented by this cartoon. Uh, dark, earthy undertones in the background. It's trying to show you the chaos that, that went with this, that goes with dictatorships. Probably that's all you can do in terms of pointing out specific evidence in the cartoon. In terms of our link, well, obviously we're looking at rule of law. Uh, this dictator's days have run out. He put himself above the rule of law for so long. He's been toppled. He imposed on people's rights and freedoms for too long. He put his self-interest above theirs for too long, and it caught up with him. People have had enough. They're going to topple him in a revolution. The last thing you might do is speculate as to why they're yanking over the dictator statue. Probably they're, they're sick of the corruption. They're sick of the scandal. Probably they've been economically marginalized and politically marginalized for so long. They suffered. They've had enough and they're willing to go to great lengths to bring about change. Finally, in terms of perspective, what we're looking at here for sure is an embracement of liberalism. That cartoonist is not supporting what he's depicted in the cartoon. He's critiquing what he's depicted in the cartoon. So there is a person that is supporting liberal measures like accountability, rule of law, maybe a constitution, because with those things in place, you should not get this cartoon. And what's going on in the cartoon? 
Okay, hope you like that one. While we're at it, let's do our relationships, our links. So quickly to, to refresh your memories of the sources. That was the source from Tuesday. Source number one, uh, escape from Camp 14, a North Korean prison camp. Uh, they talk about, they reference Song Bun, the case system of North Korea, and how people from the bottom cased. Um, a third of the 23 million people in that cased are subject to indoctrination and heavy propaganda as a way of cleansing radical thinking and extremist thought that might threaten the dictatorship of North Korea. That was a really good source. If I could do this all again, I might give that source. I might have given it today instead of the first day of the week, but, well, it's too late now. Anyway, source two was just from yesterday. I really like that one, too. I, I had to, to look really hard to find one on the, the Cultural Revolution in China. I especially like the, the allusion to the little red book uh, that the Red Guard is holding in the foreground. Source two was the Cultural Revolution. I've been wondering, like, I know that the, that's an AK-47. I know that is a bayonet. What's that? And then finally, source three was just today, you know, the toppling of the dictator. So now what we do is we, we put all these together in terms of relationships and linking. So when I study the three sources, I mean, what I see, obviously, number one is political repression. Um, clearly, we see political repression in source one to the point that they're they're locking up probably innocent people and re-educating them to create a scapegoat for the government and the population. So for sure, I can fit repression with source number one. I can fit repression with source number two. Clearly, the Cultural Revolution was all about political repression and source three, political repression. Um, to go one step further, I, I might even pick a, a relationship along the lines of eliminating the opposition. Um, in this case, in North Korea, while they may not be murdering out and out the opposition, they're re-educating, indoctrinating their political opposition. In source two, they're they're eliminating by murder their political opposition, some two million of them. And finally, in source three, it's showing you that this dictator came to power by eliminating his opposition. That might be a good avenue to go down as well. In terms of cause and effect, well, I'm trying to look here. I could see source three being a result of sources one and two. I could see that if people suffered under sources one and two long enough that they may resort to a revolution, which would lead you to source three. That would be a possibility too. Uh, we've got all kinds of sources here. I urge you to keep watching the videos on the source interpretations. I know you're not doing the diploma, but this is a really effective tool and way of understanding social studies and history. This is the most important to me, and I'm biased because I teach social. This is the most important skill you will have out of, out of school, out from your education. The ability to look at, at a piece of literature, a source, a tweet, even a video, and figure out what that person is really saying. What's behind what that person is saying, that cartoon you're looking at, that photograph you're looking at. Um, it'll make you a more informed observer of history. It'll make you a more effective and knowledgeable voter. Um, it will make you a better person. So I really hope you're, you're still going through and doing this. Um, it's the most important tool to me that you're going to get out of your education. Um, you can dissect life. You can, you can interpret things rather than just following the crowd like a sheep. Um, okay, thanks for listening.